Okay, for this video we're going to demonstrate uh, the simple harmonic motion of a spring, both uh, up and down. In fact, let's go ahead and start this one swinging. I want to do this by, by pulling straight down, trying not to disturb it too much here. We're just going to let that kind of settle in, and you can see that there's a nice regular motion here. I've got on this pen a um, tape to the bottom here is an ultraviolet LED at the end of the rod and I've got a piece of ultraviolet paper right here and so we can see that uh, it uh, what the response is for the ultraviolet pen so it kind of traces a pattern on there we're going to take advantage of that we want it to kind of settle in here for a little bit <clears throat> I've got a much longer piece of that on the back of this cardboard and right now it's being it's turned away from us so that it's not being exposed to light too soon. So this is now starting to settle in. Notice the pen is kind of keeping its same orientation. If you've already seen the sand pendulum video, it's like the sand pendulum, but where the, the sand leaves a trail of, of uh, sand from its pattern, right? And if we leave it just move up and down, like on here, we just let it move up and down in front of it, it just leaves a straight line pattern. But if we move this paper, then we can start to see there's a wave pattern. And that's what we're going to do to a larger extent. And I'll slide the paper in that orientation. I've got the track behind it here to kind of help maintain a, a proper distance. So I'm going to try and do a straight uh, or a constant motion as we move across. And so here, here it comes from left to right. Alright, so there's our paddle. Let me put it behind here. So there's our pattern. It's now starting to fade already, but we got a pretty decent pattern right there. And we can measure wavelength and um, things like that as well to kind of identify. We did that a little bit with the simple harmonic motion. But uh, anyway, so, so there's our pattern. Let's do it one more time. This time I'm going to move a little bit faster with the thing because we're losing the uh, current wave. So I'll move a little bit faster you'll be able to see, well I want you to predict what's the wave going to look like if I move this board faster. This is still moving. And so there's our wave pattern um, in the faster rotation. Is that what you're expecting? Or are you expecting the waves to be more scrunched together? In this case they're more spread out. So what do I have to do to get them more scrunched together? I have to go slower, right? So, So we're seeing a couple of uh, things there. From this end to this end, you can see a bit of the damping effect, right? It's getting smaller over here. I wasn't at a constant speed. I kind of sped up a little bit right here. Um, but anyway, that's kind of a neat way to translate the simple harmonic motion, up-down motion that we see here to a two-dimensional illustration of a wave, which is the typical sine curve. So. We use that a lot to represent wave behavior, which in many cases is used to represent simple harmonic motion. All right, this is uh, simple harmonic motion as well, this time uh, we have the ultraviolet pen taped to a cart, and on either side of the cart there is a spring, and those springs uh, have roughly equal spring constants. And so when we pull it from equilibrium, we see a nice regular motion there. Let me go ahead and turn the lights 
a little bit more of this direction so we can see that a little bit. And so if we look at the movement of that pen now in front of our phosphorescent paper, it's this straight line motion, right? If I move the pen horizontally like I did last time with the spring, we're not really seeing what we want to see, right? We have to move the pen perpendicular to the wave here, so we have to kind of come up like this in order to see that pattern that we're looking for. And uh, we also have to have less light, right? This is too much light shining on this sheet. So I'll adjust the light and then I'll use that long strip of phosphorescent paper um, to see for to see a, a longer waveform. Here's our phosphorescent paper. It's been kind of in the shadows for a while, so it's had time to kind of lose that energy. I'm going to bring it up behind it here. And this dampens pretty quickly, so I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Let's get it in the middle. And then I'll raise the thing up here, so... So there's our, there's our wave pattern uh, from the cart. Notice the cart's already kind of pretty much dampened out right here. But this pretty much gave the, the same kind of a sine wave pattern that we got from the vertical spring activity, this horizontal spring activity. We simply needed to move uh, our secondary medium, which is this phosphorescent paper, in a direction, right, this is moving this way, we have to move the paper perpendicular to that. The spring was oscillating this way, we had to move the paper perpendicular to that. So anyway, that was one speed. Let's go ahead and get it oscillating here again. We'll, uh, I'll pull it up pretty quickly this time. Get it centered. Got to let it dampen out here a little bit. That looks pretty centered. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> I went off track there, but uh, we got a decent. We got a decent one. Let's. They, they're pretty quick. Let's do another one here. I'm gonna try it one-handed. I think the two hands threw me off. There we go. That one looks pretty good. So let's do one where I'm moving slower. I'll go ahead and keep it here so I can kind of gauge how much to oscillate it. There we go. This time I'll move slower. You can see a significant damping on this one from this end to this end over the course of that, what, maybe uh, eight or ten seconds there. There's quite a bit of loss of energy due to the friction of the wheels, uh, primarily there as this oscillates back and forth. Anyway, that's kind of a, kind of a neat way to translate simple harmonic motion to a sine wave right there. I think that's kind of neat.